Well, most of the 13 provinces and territories have signed on to a federal $10 a day child care deal. Only Ontario and Nunavut are left to go. So what are the sticking points? Karina Gould is the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development. She's in Burlington, Ontario. Hi, Minister. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's begin with Nunavut. Uh, when do you expect that deal will be signed and uh, what, what needs to happen in order for it to be so? Um, quite early in the new year, actually, uh, we pretty much have an agreement in principle with Nunavut. Um, as you may know, uh, both the federal government and Nunavut had elections this year, and Nunavut needs to do some consultation work uh, with uh, the Inuit in Nunavut. And so as they go through that process, um, hopefully everything uh, goes smoothly, and then we'll be able to sign an agreement, uh, hopefully by the end of January. And then all attention turns to Ontario, I suppose. When did you last speak to the Ontario Education Minister and when will you next speak to him to get that done? Well, I last spoke with Minister Lecce uh, at the end of last week, and I'm hoping to speak with him shortly after this interview. In fact, um, there are very positive conversations going on between uh, Canada and Ontario, and I think there's significant political will to reach an agreement um, early in the new year as well. What would you say are the sticking points right now? Look, right now, um, Ontario is a, a large and complex uh province and uh, has quite a robust child care system in place. And so we're just going through the details. Um, you know, this is a, a transfer of $10.2 billion uh, for Ontario families and to build a, a robust child care system that is affordable, uh, has quality and inclusive uh, child care and education opportunities. And so it's uh, it's just going through all of those details, uh, which is which is which is a lot to go through. And I would say the conversations have really picked up in the last Last couple of weeks, uh, which which makes me quite optimistic. You, you sound like like the language you're using is if you have a, a effectively a deal in principle. Yes. Um, I don't think I would go that far, but I think um, where we are now is there is an alignment uh, between both the governments of Canada and in Ontario in terms of the objectives of reducing fees by fifty percent uh, within the first year getting to $10 a day by 2025-26, um, increasing the number of spaces available and making sure that there are supports uh, for child early uh, early childhood educators. Um, so I think there's there's a lot that we agree on. Um, we're just going through the details. Uh, and you know, as I said, this is a, a $10 billion program. So there's a lot of details to get through. Have you come up on money? That was one of Ontario's uh, issues that there wasn't enough on the table. Have you, has, has, has the federal government government moved significantly on that? Um, as I said, you know, it's it's a $10.2 billion um, offer for Ontario, which is part of our $27.2 billion program across the country. Uh, it's a significant um, amount of money that will go a long way to helping uh, families in Ontario. Um, so we're, we're just having conversations in terms of what the details of that agreement will look like. I imagine ears uh, are, are perking up throughout the province when they hear not only what you're saying, but the way you're saying it. It, it really does sound like uh, you're close. I know you said early in the New Year. Can you be a bit more specific on that? What kind of timeline well, I, I are you don't talking think, about? Yeah, I, I would hesitate to give a timeline, but I, I do want to assure um, family families and, and folks in Ontario that we are having really good and productive conversations. Um, you know, we at the federal level um, are absolutely there engaging uh, with the province and there's a lot of goodwill uh, on both sides. And so I won't be able to give you an exact timeline because those conversations still continue to take place. But as I said, I, I feel very optimistic that we're going to reach um, a, a great deal that is going to really help help uh, families in Ontario's and support our early childhood educators, as well as the broader child care ecosystem in the province of Ontario, just like we've been able to do right across the country. I'm going to I'm going to come at this from one more angle, if you don't mind. Do you see anything? Sure. Do you see anything at this point that, that would derail it? Uh, is, is that a fair way to look at it? Um, you know, I, I don't want to. Uh, you know, say that I guess nothing could derail it, but I, I really, um, I really do think that the conversations are going well, both at the officials level, they're having really detailed conversations, um, 
last week, you know, they met every single day, sometimes twice a day for multiple hours on end. Um, at the political level, we we're having really positive conversations at, as well. Um, you never know when something might come up. But uh, as, I, as I said, you know, I, I feel optimistic. Um, I think things are going in the right direction. And certainly, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to be uh, engaged and available, uh, because this is a priority, both for me personally, as a, as a mother of a child, in child care in Ontario, um, but also as a minister uh, of children, of families, children, and social development. And it is a top priority for our government as well. We've been able to negotiate uh, and conclude 11 um, child care agreements um, up to date over the last six months, which I think is really um, quite incredible. And I have to give a shout out and kudos to uh, my colleague, the former Minister of Families, Children, Social Development, Minister Hussein, for really leading that charge. Um, and I've been really pleased to announce uh, three agreements since I've taken up this post. We've got two more to go to make this a really uh, Canada-wide uh, early learning and child care system. Um, and so I think there's there's really positive momentum. And, and maybe if you'll just allow me, I want to give a special shout out to uh, the women and men who have been advocates in this space for over 50 years. I know this has been a long time coming, and I'm really pleased to be part of the government that is delivering on this because I really do think it will be transformational for our society and for our economy. Uh, one of your mandate letter commitments uh, is to work with your ministerial colleagues to, quote, ensure mental health supports are accessible to children and youth as they recover from the impact of the pandemic. Can you be a little bit more specific about that? What does that mean uh, in, in practical terms? What are we talking about there? Yeah, uh, look, I mean, this is such an important issue. I mean, we have seen how much the pandemic has impacted um, the mental health of, of all Canadians of all ages, but particularly for our, our younger people in Canada with schools being closed, you know, as young people, your, your whole life is about your, your social life. And so what can we do to make sure that we're really setting them up for success? I mean, we have uh, Minister Bennett, who is, you know, a minister dedicated uh, to mental health. And so I'm going to be working with her, as well as our provincial and territorial colleagues, um, to make sure that the mental health supports are there for young people. You know, throughout the pandemic, we provided additional support um, to the kids' help phone line. We provided additional support to community organizations that were serving uh, youth with a particular focus on mental health. And so we're going to continue to do that work, but also see what are the other things that we need to be doing to be reaching young people. And I think particularly right now, um, you know, as we're going into the holidays um, and certainly it's a different um, different holiday than I think many of us thought it was going to be even, you know, two weeks ago. Um, and so really taking the time to think about um, what we need to be doing to support our younger generations, to give them the support that they need um, to be successful, particularly as we come out of this pandemic. All right. We'll leave it at that for now. Uh, Minister, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Paul, and wishing everybody a very happy holidays. Thanks. Bye-bye. All -bye. right. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.